experience in contacting people and searching the internet <coughs> for information about the inspiration of our club, John Cantu. Here to share just a little of that, join Lee, please join me in welcoming Cassandra with her speech, What a Long Strange Trip It's Been. That's it, folks. I've been on a crazy adventure, actually, over the last two years, contacting everyone that I could think of, and so many people that I had no idea I'd be in contact with, to learn some things about John Kentu that I could share with all of you, and that I could memorialize so that people in the future of Laugh Lovers will know why we celebrate John Kentu, his memory, his teachings, and those sorts of things. So first, this is a picture that most of you have never seen. It's an outdoor oh. picture of Cantu, and he's laughing. He's having a great time. So few people ever saw him outdoors, and uh, <laughs> it's a great, great thing. But what I learned was, in his life, there were the early days, and then there were the crazy days at the zoo, and then there were those times with Toastmasters and the National Speakers Association, and so many friends that he made there. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things, but I also want to tell you some things that I found out in this research. There are lots of pictures of John that have never been seen by people who didn't actually take them. This happens to be Craig Harrison's spread, and Craig ran into John one night after he had given a speech and people had commented on his evaluations that he didn't seem comfortable using the microphone. <laughs> so he and John hightailed it back up to Craig's hotel room, or was it? John, yeah. John's room. It was but, John's yeah, room. With Al McCree. Well, there was a vodka bottle. And so John just used the vodka <laughs> bottle to show Craig how to hold a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually a, an item that involves a gal named Rebecca Irwin Spencer. And Rebecca had been at the Holy City Zoo, and you can see her in front of the zoo here. She's in a old, old photograph. Now, Rebecca Irwin Spencer is actually a Comedy Day winner yeah. from the San Francisco Comedy Day. And she and John actually helped found the San Francisco Comedy Day. Uh -huh. But what you see here is her contract when she's becoming John Cantu's secretary. Oh. And she said that she really wanted to make sure that things were in writing. And she included things like that she was going to get paid holidays and vacation when it was available. Rebecca Spencer actually went on to become the personal assistant to Robin Williams. <gasps> Wow. So she's in New York right now with him doing a, uh, doing a Broadway show. This is Kenny Cantu. This is one of John's brothers. And I've been in good communication with Kenny both by phone and by email for the last couple of years. And what Kenny says is that John was the oldest of 12 children. And those kids grew up. Now, John was born in January of 1948. His parents were married late in 18, or 1947, so you do the math. John uh, grew up with these kids in a migrant worker's shack. There were two bedrooms, and so all 14 of them stayed in this two-bedroom migrant worker shack outside of Detroit. So he went to school with all kinds of kids that that their parents were working in the factories, and John was odd. Everybody knew that he was a really smart kid, but he wasn't as sort of, you know, bulky and robust as some of the other kids, so they kind of took care of him, and everybody knew not to mess with, with John. I want to tell you something that he said, that, that Kenny Cantu said about John. He says, Everyone in the family called him John. I heard this story once where John was a very young kid, and he and a few of his brothers were talking about storms, and they were in an old house next to ours. John suddenly said, if lightning was going to strike me, this is what I would do. And he quickly jumped 
on a large old-fashioned mason jar used for canning. And of course it broke and cut the heck out of his foot. Oh. We lived in the black neighborhood and the lower income whites. So these two groups of people were John's early childhood role models. His mates were mostly kids of heavy truck driver types, low income GM and Ford factory workers. This was more old fashioned foundry type work, hot, smoky and nasty at best. And the kids of these types of workers were John's friends. And then he says the army, the Vietnam War, was John's way out. In hindsight, in the recovery of my own life, I strongly believe that John's trip to Vietnam may have been a pattern in some of his later self-destructiveness. And basically, what uh, Kenny's talking about is that in the crazy zoo days, when John returned to the United States and came to San Francisco in the early 70s, he um, let every attraction and addiction <laughs> have its way with him. He was in the bars and comedy clubs just about every night and certainly met a lot of ladies there and um, tried to defile them. <laughs> now, this is, this is Will Durst. And Will Durst oh, wow. uh, tells a story about how he was at the zoo and Cantu let him speak right after Robin Williams had spoken. And the entire room walked out when Robin left the stage. And Will Durst got up there, and, who also is one of the San Francisco Comedy Day winners, got up there and said, hey, that last guy must have been lousy because he walked the whole room. <laughs> <laughs> There's other things in here. This is a flyer from the zoo. These are, oh, this is a great one. There's a guy named Rudy Reber. That's Rudy. And he was actually on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? He was one of the co comedians in those days working with John at the zoo. And Rudy was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And Will Durst was actually his phone a friend. But when he called Will, Will got the, the question wrong, and he ended up losing all the money. Oh! <laughs> yep, it happened. <laughs> there are great stories in here, and I, I want to talk about the years that he was with Toastmasters. You know, John had worked in this environment that one of the comedians says was filled with jackals all of his life and he would teach comedy and he would coach comedians and that kind of thing and sometimes it was rough but they know that with Toastmasters we are a friendly pretty willing bunch and that he could coach us to add humor to our presentations of every kind and we would soak that in without heckling him usually <laughs> so on behalf of everyone who's participated in this, especially Susan Searcy, his ex-wife, who gave me permission to use copyrighted material from their archives, I want to say thank you so much, and I hope that you and future generations enjoy the book. Yeah. Woohoo, Cassandra! Yeah. Yeah. several months in the making. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Let's have some feedback for Cassandra. Oh. Yes, Carol. Well, I think it was really wonderful to take a book like that and to share it so fully when, you know, we can see there's small type, but yet I felt like, like I really got a feeling for it. <clears throat> also, what you've done, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. See what you. Look like. Are those what you've done and the color of it and everything. Mm -hmm. It's like you brought him back to life. Just for I, yep, I would want to. Yeah. And I, I like the clarity of your voice, which is, of course is quite an asset, and the clarity of the presentation. You know, you spoke to us. So it's, and of course, it's so wonderful to know this. And thank you so much. Thank you. Cassandra, I think it's a really touching tribute, especially because a lot of us newer members didn't know <coughs> Okay. Go ahead, Carol. Well, as 
as a person who has shared a certain experience with you, and in the sense that uh, we almost died, um, it was a very close call. Yes. Um, I, I just can't help but sort of hope somebody would do something like that for me. Yeah. <laughs> and look what you've done for him. Yeah. It's all, it's like uh, maybe it's everybody's wish, <clears throat> but maybe people, other people haven't had to think of it the way I have. I have to say the hardest part of this whole process, I mean, there were literally times that I would just start crying because I thought, I wish that other people had known him. And virtually everyone that I was in touch with told me they miss him all the time, every day, that he was so important to them. And all these years later, they still miss him, as I do. Yeah. And I'm feeling like I'm getting a sense of who he is. And I <coughs> gave a little Kanchu moment myself that I had never one more from what, Willie. Yeah, he's staying do, alive. Do any of his words remain? Amazingly enough, one of the things that Susan Searcy gave me was a transcript that of, of a training that Cantu did. So he's actually introducing himself and how he evolved in the comedy world. And one of the things that he did was he wrote the jokes for cartoons for several years. And he sold them to all different kinds of nationally syndicated cartoonists. And those <coughs> cartoons that I was just showing you, those are Cantus. So yes, the, the words remain. And his, his cartoons are in here also. Oh, wow. So please take some time and look at it. Because you'll love him even more when you understand just how smart and funny and wonderful he is. And one thing I'd say, Mr. Claflin, is that one thing we loved about Cantu is he had a formula, just as you told us about the storytelling formula using Red Riding Hood as <coughs> an example, Cantu told us how to formulate jokes from scratch by using a particular technique that he actually teaches in here. Yes? The, the reason I, I don't want to go on too long, the reason I asked that question is that in the storytelling world, a lot of folks that were part of the whole renaissance back in the 70s and 80s have passed away now. And we're doing these tribute programs where we don't talk about them, but we, but we tell their stories. We sort of bring them back, but we might have a musical tribute. And I wonder if somebody, or if you at some point, might be able to put together some of his words. <coughs> so oh, I'd love that. get to hear him. Yeah, there's a three-page <coughs> uh, thing in here. Yeah. And I, I hope that you really enjoy it. Okay. Thank so you much. very much. <laughs> yes.